If you've heard of reflection in C-sharp, then you've heard that there's probably a lot of misuse of how we can leverage reflection. My name's Nick Cosentino, and I'm a Principal Software Engineering Manager at Microsoft. In this video, I want to show you just how powerful reflection can be. This is going to be a beginner video, so if you're very experienced with reflection in C-sharp, this might be a little bit too simple for you, but if you'd like a little bit of a refresher or you're very new to reflection and you wanna see just how powerful it is, this will be perfect for you. A quick reminder to check that pin column for a link to my free weekly newsletter and my courses on Dome Train. With that said, let's jump over to Visual Studio. So we are able to use reflection to easily go get information about a class. Now reflection allows us to break some rules that we have with compile time code. And what we're able to do is basically bypass access modifiers. And access modifiers are something we put in place to help guide how people are supposed to use our types. And that means if we had something marked as public, we're trying to indicate that people on the outside of our class should be able to work with this. And if something's marked as private, we're saying, hey, look, no one else outside of here should be able to touch this. With reflection, we get to say, who cares? We're the boss here. So let's go see how that works. With this class that I've defined here, I've marked the class itself public, but everything else inside of it is going to be private. So starting with the constructor, I've made this a private constructor, and that should mean that no one can make this by default. So marking it private means no one can say new my class and get an instance of it. So we can't really go much further, but just to prove what we're able to do, I've added in a couple of private fields as well. So these are instance fields marked as private, I've left a comment saying no one should be able to see these except this current class that we're inside of. They're marked as private, no one can touch this. Now the other thing that I've gone ahead and done is added in a private method here. And again, the only spot that we should be able to call this is from right inside of this class. There is no inheriting class. There's no other code running this because no one can see it. And just to show you, on line 59, I can't even add this line of code. It won't even compile. So that means that if I have this code written here, all because I have this private constructor, I can't even make an instance of it. And that means that I can't even see this even if I wanted to, because it's marked as private, sure, but I can't even get that far. And just to you know, kind of illustrate it, if I do IntelliSense here and we get the completion menu coming up, it doesn't have my method because it's private. So we can't even make an instance. We can't even see this private method. Let's go see how reflection can break all of the rules for us. And a quick disclaimer before I do that is that I'm not encouraging you to write code like this. Seriously, this is the reason why people say reflection gets misused. You can do some really powerful stuff with it. And because you can do powerful stuff, does not mean that you should. More often than not, when people find out what they can do with reflection, they try to use it on everything. And there's a reason that we have the typing system that we do in C Sharp. And there's a reason that we don't use reflection for everything in C Sharp in the first place. So that's my disclaimer. I'll teach you how this works, but I don't want you to go apply it to everything. You got to promise me that. Okay, let's head back over. The first thing that we're going to do, and I've shown this in another video, is get the constructors that we have access to. So using reflection, we can get the type that we want to work with, which is called my class. You can see that on line three up here. We're going to get the type, then we're going to ask for the constructors, which is on line six. With the constructors, what we'll be able to do is go create an instance of this type. And before I go create that instance, I just want to print out some information about the constructor so we can see what we're working with. So let's go run this quickly and see what the output is. Uh-oh, wait a second. We get the type getting printed out, my class, but it says that there's no constructors. Wait a second. Didn't I just say that reflection was going to help us break all these rules? And now we're being foiled by that private constructor. It's totally hidden from us. Well, yes, by default but we have some other things we can use in reflection that give us access to this. Okay, so back in the code here on line seven through nine, I've changed this up a little bit. I've left the original one in on line six so you can still see it, but I'm adding in these binding flags. I have non-public and instance. These are enum flags. I have another video on that, by the way, which you can watch right up here, and that will explain how these flags work with enums in C Sharp. And what we're able to do is ask for non-public and instance constructors. So let's go ahead and run this now and see what we get. And behold, we get one constructor that comes back. So we now have access to this private constructor and no one was supposed to be able to see this on the outside. And now that we have the instance of that constructor, let's go create an instance 
of the type from that constructor. What I'm going to do, and this isn't really a safe thing to do unless you know what you're working with, we just saw that one comes back so I can ask for the first position within this array, but I'm going to invoke the constructor and null means that I'm not passing in any arguments into that constructor. It's a constructor with no parameters. So doing this is going to basically call the first and only constructor that we have in that list with no parameters. And when we do that, we should get an instance of our type back, but it comes back as an object. So we need to cast it to the type that we want to work with. So let's go ahead and run this and see what we get. All right, we're getting a little bit further, right? So we have our single constructor, and then we print out to the console that we're about to make an instance, and then we get an instance of it. So when we pass in instance here on line 23 into the string interpolation, we get my class. Like that's the two string method getting called on our instance. So we do in fact have an instance at this point. So, so far we've already overcome that first obstacle, and I couldn't even get that code to compile earlier when I tried to show you. I can't write new my class because that constructor is private. That meant that I could never instantiate it, but I've just shown you with reflection that we can go make a new instance of it. Let's keep going and see how far we can get. Okay, so if we're able to get the constructors and create an instance, we should in theory be able to go get the method, right? We should be able to list all the private methods if we use the same technique with these binding flags. So let's go and see if we can do that. All right, when I ask for the non-public instance methods, we get three methods coming back. We can see we have my method, which is the one that I define. So this is the one we're truly interested in, but we do have a couple of other methods that are not the ones we're interested in, but nevertheless, these are non-public instance methods that are available on the type. So what we should do is try to call this one directly because that's the one that we're interested in. What's cool about this is we have proof that we can see it already. And just like the constructor, the first step is, can we see it? And if we can see it, the next step is what? Can we call it? Let's try it out. All right, so on the screen now, I have some link code that's just essentially going to be looking for that single method that we have. So this was a collection of three methods. I'm just gonna look for the one that's called my method. It was also at position zero, but I'm not exactly sure if the ordering is always consistent. Not really sure what the default ordering is. I wasn't paying attention if it was the order it was declared in or like alpha numeric or something. So I'm just gonna ask for it by the name. And then what I'm going to do is print out whether or not we have that method. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to call that method. So invoke is how we call things. But you'll notice what's interesting about this one compared to some of the other things so far is that I have to pass in the instance, right? When we call the constructor, we don't have an instance yet, right? We're creating the instance. But now that we have one, because this is not a static method, we need to give it an instance that we want this method to be operating on. The null part is because there's no parameters that go into this method, but instance is required because this is a non-static method or an instance method, so we do need to provide that. Let's go run this and see what we get. And I hope you're seeing the power of reflection so far, right? Because we were able to make the instance and now we have access to it. We can see that we have avoid my method we have an instance of the method that we can work with. And then what I did was I called it. This is the console write line from within that method. It prints out, this is super top secret. And then it prints our two fields. How cool is that? We went from being able to not even create an instance of this type to creating an instance and then calling the method. We couldn't even do the first step in the beginning, but we can go one step further even beyond this, because what we're doing here is printing out the string a numeric value. These are two fields, but these are kind of boring, right? Like we have an empty or a null string here. We have a zero for the integer. I want some different values there, but these are private fields. How the heck could we possibly have access to these, right? Well, the answer of course is going to be reflection. So here's the last part that we're going to work with here. I'm going to ask for the fields in the same way that I asked for the methods and the constructors. And that means non-public and instance. I'm gonna print out how many fields we have. And then what I'm going to do is try to make sure we can look up the fields by their name. This is just like I did with the method. So I wanna look them up by name. I'm gonna find the numeric one and I'm gonna find the string one. But you'll notice that I'm gonna call set value 
on both of these. And very much like the method call, I need to pass in the instance because we're going to be modifying this particular instance. But I also have to pass in parameters because this is the value that I want to set. So I am going to be setting the numeric value to one, two, three, and I'm going to set the string value to ABC. And just to prove that all of this works, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call that secret method one more time and we'll see what values it puts out for us. Okay, let's jump to the very bottom part of this where we get the private fields. We find that we have two private fields exactly as we might expect. So we're going to be setting the private fields and then I didn't print out the output of trying to read those values back or anything like that, but we call that private method again. And if we look at the last three lines of this output, the string value has ABC and the numeric value has one, two, three. And that my friends is how you can leverage reflection to do some pretty powerful things in C sharp. We just broke a ton of rules that we probably shouldn't have to do in most cases. The reality is when you're programming long enough with enough edge cases, there's probably something like this that will come up at some point. However, like my disclaimer earlier in the video, this is not something I recommend you jump into doing. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. And I'll go one step further and say just because you can with this, you probably shouldn't. So please try to leverage this only when you really need to. Put a lot of thought into this if you find that you're trying to write some code that needs to do this because I would say more often than not, you're probably in a situation where something can be designed in a better way. So aside from just trying to break some rules using reflection and trying to be cool and show other people that you don't give a crap about their access modifiers, why might you want to use reflection? Well, if you check out this video next, I'll give you a brief example. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.